Hi everybody, my name is Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo Linux YouTube channel. And we thank you very much for joining us. We are your family. You guys are our family. And we love you guys and we truly do. And there is just a tremendous amount of family and friends that we have that we have met through this channel and that we have met and that we hang out with in our Telegram group. And we love you all. And we really, really do. And so we value you guys and... We don't have a tremendous amount of family that we call family. We all of our families back in North America, and they are definitely absolutely not Torah keepers. They definitely do not care about what Yah cares about. And as much as we have tried to convince them and try to show them the love of Yah, they uh, they laugh and they, they scoff. And we are these religious fanatics. And you know, there's really no fanaticism to it when you keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator, because the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator have been set from the beginning of time. There's nothing um, fanatical about it because it is what we are supposed to be living by, like our entire days, our entire lives. Our kids are supposed to hear about them. We're supposed to talk about it when we get up. We're supposed to talk about it when we go to bed. And that is what the purpose of this entire channel is, is trying to get people to seek our creator where he's able to be found. And he's absolutely not found in these 501c3 churches. He's absolutely not found at Christmas parties and Easter parties and hanging out with the world and watching tele-live vision programming. That is not where our creator is. Our creator is all around us. He is a wonderful creator. He's an ingenious creator. He has created everything spectacular. He has given us this to dwell in. And he is a wonderful father. And so as a father figure... Who, who we should be looking at as a father figure, he has given us a set of guidelines. And these guidelines are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And it is within these books that you guys will be able to find the kingdom, the kingdom that is to come. But unlike all of Yisrael, who, um, you know, who completely, uh, you know, from the days of King David, even before King David, uh, they were defying our creator. They were setting up their Ashroth poles. They were, they were, uh, worshiping the balls, the the and you know they they never stopped and they could never ever stop, and you know even all the way through Shemuel, all the way through Kings, um, and then Isaiah starts prophesizing about all of this, and then you have right towards the end of Kings, you have big old Nebuchadnezzar coming in and taking all these guys into captivity, and people don't understand that we are in the same kind of place, we are in a captivity, we've all awoken, and we're at, we're spread across the four corners of these lands. And in the four corners of these lands, um, we, we, are, we are essentially captives, right? A lot of us are in North America, a lot of us are in Africa, a lot of us are in South America. We're, we're, we're all over the place. And once we wake up and realize that there is a set of guidelines, that our creator lives and reigns, and he's going to send back his son, who is our Melchizedek priest, then a lot of this starts making sense. But if you're sitting here peace reading people on YouTube or listening to guys here and there and you're getting confused... You shouldn't, because you need to look into scriptures. It is from the front of the book to the end of the book is doctrine. All the extracurricular books as well that have been tossed out is also doctrine. And so this is what we're trying to get with folks and trying to read, uh, trying to get with uh, the people who are willing to learn about our creator. And here we are. Gentlemen, how you doing? Good. How's life? Good. good. Everyone good? Yeah. You look a little spunkier than you did yesterday. I got a dog sitting here scratching the heck out of me. It looks like you got some fleas as well. All right, let's get into the book of Adam and Kawa. We are into chapter 37, and the dogs are going to be bad. I will pause. All righty, and after these messages, we will be right back, and we are back, continuing on. All right, so we are into the book of uh, Adam and Kawa, chapter 37, and um, the title of this one is, is interesting because I think that's what I titled the video. Is 43 days of penance do not redeem one hour of sin. And, you know, this is, you know, a lot of people, especially where we all wake up in captivity, we wake up in sin. And from our days back in Babylon, Nicole and I, my wife and I, we used to sit there and we would watch television programming. We would watch these bad shows, that things on HBO. Um, things that are just absolutely horrific now that you think about it and now that you come back to it. Things that are all... It, it, it very very horrible things and um this is the things that you we want to try to get rid of in people's lives and the stuff that is absolutely not healthy for any of us and so here we are let's begin then adam said to kawa seest thou not these figs and their leaves with which we recovered ourselves when we were stripped of our bright nature 
But now we know not what misery and suffering may come from us from eating them. And, you know, for anyone who's just picking up this series right here, yesterday our creator had the, uh, he basically gave them a couple of figs. Um, probably monstrous figs is my guess. Probably awesome figs that came out of the garden. And um, now they are, they're, they're very, very hungry. It was day 42 yesterday. Today is day 43. They were extremely hungry. They're parched. And their, their digestive systems and their, their bodies don't quite react like ours do yet. And since they have not had that food and their bodies haven't done its first digesting of this kind of food like this, things are um, much different here in the world, Aaron. Two. Now, therefore, Okawa. Sorry, guys. My dog's going at it. <clears throat> now, therefore, Okawa, let us restrain ourselves and not eat of them, thou and I. And let us ask Elohim to give us of the fruit of the tree of life. Thus Adam and Kawa restrained themselves and did not eat of these figs. But Adam began to pray to Elohim and beseech him to give him of the fruit of the tree of life, saying thus, O Elohim, when you transgressed thy commandment at the sixth hour on the sixth day, we were stripped of the bright nature we had and did not continue in the garden after our transgression more than three hours. But on the evening thou madest come out of it, O Elohim, we transgressed against, it, against thee, one hour, and all these trials and sorrows have come upon us until this day. And those days together, with this 43rd day, do not redeem that one hour in which we transgressed. O Elohim, look upon us with an eye of pity, and do not requite us according to the transgression of thy commandment in presence of thee. O Elohim, give us of the fruit of the tree of life, that we may eat of it and live, and turn not to see sufferings and other trouble in this earth. For thou art Elohim. When we transgressed thy commandment, thou madest come out of the garden and didst send a cherub to keep the, keep the tree of life, lest we should eat thereof and live and know nothing of faintness after we transgressed. But now, O Yahuwah, behold, we have endured all these days and have borne sufferings. Make, thee, make these 43 days an equivalent for the one hour in which we transgressed. So they transgressed, they ate, that, they just ate one fruit, and they, uh, 43 days still does not account for the time that they sin. Yeah, and it's just not eating one fruit, right? It was it's the command they broke. It's the command they broke, right? And that is, that is where we are trying to get folks out there to value the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator and keep them. It's a fine line, and we're told not to go to the left, we're told not to go to the right, it's, and in fact, we, we had know of a, a, a narrow gate with a path that is wide to destruction. And so this is what we are trying to figure out. I see Eli over here like fighting the dogs or something. What's going on over there, Eli? Uh, so I had to get on the ground to deal with Panthro. And Michaela, she doesn't like when I'm on the ground. It looked, I looked back and he's like falling out of the chair or something. No, I'd climb into the chair because if I just try to stand up, <laughs> she would attack me while I'm trying to stand up. We're sorry for these distractions, guys. It is a dog house around here, literally. Okay, let's go into 38. After these things, the word of Elohim came to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as to the fruit of the tree of life, for which thou askest, I will not give it to thee now. But when the 5,500 years are fulfilled, then will I give thee of the fruit of the tree of life, and thou shalt eat. And live forever, thou and Kawa, and thy righteous seed. Now, the key word, I think, in this point is that it is righteous seed. Now, how, how would we define righteousness, Jade? Uh, by following the Torah, by obeying the commands, by being the people who wants to, by obeying his will. Yeah. If we are um, going against his commands and we are living how we want to live, or living as the majority of the world lives, then we are not righteous people. Yeah, and you, you, you look at the Christian religion, and the Christians, we've had, we've had people mock us. We have uh, Dirty Evil Eric, and Dirty Evil Eric has la laughed at us for a very long time. And he's, a, he's an evil chef down here in South America, and he, um, he uh, puts pork into all of his food. And he used to serve that to us, and we did not know that he put pork grease in everything. And then when he found out we were anti-pork, then he sent us the scale and he had measured up the pork and it said six pounds and six, it had 6.66 in it. And he, he writes, he's like thinking of you as I was weighing this out. And then he sent us this picture of uh, a pan and he had boiled that fat down into this grease. And he just scoffs and laughs. And, you know, he and his, his um, evil wife, you know, they, they sit there and they put pork in this and they're, they're poisoning the people of Yah. 
And, you know, that is like just one simple example of this. But I mean, for anybody who keeps Torah, these are what people will do and expect for people to scoff at you, to look at you like you're different because we're supposed to be different. Okay. All right. Let's head on. Three. But these 43 days cannot make amends for the hour in which thou didst transgress my commandment. O Adam, I gave thee to eat of the fig tree in which thou didst hide thyself. Go and eat of it, thou and Kawa. I will not deny thy request, neither will I disappoint thy hope. Therefore, bear up unto the fulfillment of the covenant I made with thee. And Elohim withdrew from his word from Adam. Okay, so he gave him a commandment to go and eat, right? So he has told him to eat. Adam is... Um, they were confused on the eating. They didn't know what she eat. And they, now you was like, go ahead, eat the fig. I gave it to you for reasons. Yep. And, you know, that's the thing is Adam is... is um, he's, he's hot to trot for keeping his commandments now because he knows what will happen to them. And we live in a fallen state. We live in a fallen world where we don't know what the life of the garden was like. We don't know what a bright nature is like. We have our lives that we know and we've adjusted to, but there is a better world. There is a better place as well. Okay, one. Then Adam returned to Kawa and said to her, Arise and take a fig for thyself, and I will take another. And let us go to our cave. Then Adam and Kawa took each a fig and went towards the cave. The time was about the setting of the sun, and their thoughts made them long to eat of the fruit. But Adam said to Kawa, I am afraid to eat of this fig. I do not know what may come upon me from it. So Adam wept and stood praying before Elohim, saying, Satisfy my hunger without my having to eat this fig. For after I have eaten it, what will it profit me? And what shall I desire and ask of thee, O Elohim, when it is gone? And he said again, I am afraid to eat of it, for I know not what will befall me through it. Eli, you got any thoughts there? Um, he just doesn't, he's really afraid. He has no idea what's going to happen. Yep, no idea. Okay, then the word of Elohim came to Adam and said unto him, O oh, Adam, why hast thou not this dread, neither this fasting, nor this care, ere this? And why thou hadst, and why hadst thou not this fear before thou didst transgress? But when thou camest to dwell in the strange land, Thy animal body could not be on earth without earthly food to strengthen it and to restore its powers. And Elohim withdrew his word from Adam. So he said animal body, like he must, like the bodies must change quite a bit. Like, like an animal, like I don't know if the animals ate in the garden, maybe they ate. Yeah, I don't know if they ate or not, you know, because, um, you know, we know lions would eat something of meat, right? And well, so maybe not. Maybe, maybe they weren't predators in the garden. Well, it may be. Maybe they maybe. ate like vegetables or Maybe, yeah, we, we don't know. But yeah, the state that we are in, we're definitely different from how we were originally created. We were meant to be a different style of form. We were not meant to do the kind of stuff that we're doing and eat the way we are. But now we have to, to sustain it. And so this is the power and the beauty of our creators. He had this all figured out, right? He had the digestive system all figured out. He had the way that we were supposed to walk, the way we're supposed to talk, the way we're supposed to worship. It was all figured out. It's all before us. And it is still all before us, right? It is from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. It is all there for us if we are willing to read it and not be spoon fed this. And those who are spoon fed are stuck in these churches that believe all sorts of crazy stuff. And I have never found a religion out there that abides by the laws of our creator. Not a single one of them. They, it just doesn't exist. And so this is what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to get back to the garden. We're trying to get back to the kingdom. We're trying to ready ourselves and not be one of the foolish virgins that doesn't have any oil in their lanterns. And, you know, that goes to one of the last points that I will make is that, you know, we are in winter season down here. And um, it's, it's not really winter for what you guys would consider. It doesn't get below probably 70 degrees. But for us, it's kind of cold here. And so um, normally it's in the you know 80s, 90s, somewhere in there. And so when it gets to winter where we're at 70 degrees, um, the storms move in. And so we have thunderstorms and we are in solar power out in the middle of a jungle. And so we have to decharge the house when the, when the thunders and lightnings come because of the, it's like a lightning storm all around us. And if we get hit, uh, it's, it's probably going to torch everything regardless, but we power down everything. And so it gets, it gets dark. And so we are, we are like every night we kind of disappear. We turn everything off and we have to light candles. We have to light our kerosene lanterns and it becomes like something out of like, um, uh, little house in the prairie. 
And so that's, you know, the same kind of thing that had we not, and if we did not have kerosene and we do not have our candles, we do not, we're not ready, we're going to sit in darkness. And that is the same kind of darkness that there is a spiritual darkness that a lot of people are in that you don't have the Torah and you don't really have the true faith of Messiah Yahushua. For those who are supposed to be Christians, that means that you're supposed to be a follower of Christ. Our Christ, our Messiah, our Mashiach, follow the law, statutes, and commandments. He says that we should, and he says that he will tell people to depart from him those who aren't keeping the commandments. And so hopefully somewhere out there, this will register with some folks. Hopefully somewhere along the line, we'll actually grab somebody that is, is interested in this and we'll be able to sway them. But you know what? It's not just up to us to sway. It's up to you guys to seek the truth. And the truth is not found here on YouTube or Odyssey or Rumble or wherever you guys are hearing this at. The truth is found in scriptures. And that is what our creator has made sure that we have in these end times, that we are able to make it to the end times. And there will not be any excuses because all of us have had Bibles. All of us have had scriptures. And it is up to us to seek that truth. So with that, guys, we would like to say goodbye. We love you guys very much. We hope that you have a wonderful day. And we are out. All right. Shalom. Shalom.